Hello, and welcome to Sunshine for Your Life. You know, a few years ago, actually quite a few years ago, when I was a teenager, our family purchased a pedigree dog. We'd lost a pet, and we all wanted another pet. So we searched around, and my parents bought a large a collie, and we named her Princess. She could have been a show dog. If we hadn't had her space, she would have been a show dog. She's absolutely beautiful. We named her Princess. Well, the Princess was a wonderful, wonderful dog, and the, we really loved her, and she was a wonderful pet. Now, on one weekend, I was alone in the house, which was unusual. My parents were gone, and I was alone, and Princess was with me, and a terrible storm came up. This storm was so bad, it was an electrical storm, it was a thunderstorm, but I could tell it seemed to be hovering over our house. And I can tell that's where the center was, it was located right above our house. And suddenly I heard a crack, and it was the loudest crack I have ever heard in my life, the loudest sound, and it sounded like the lightning had struck our kitchen. Princess was so nervous, I was too, Princess was so nervous that she gradually, slowly walked over to me, and then she crawled up in my lap. If you could imagine, Lassie is a lap dog, you could imagine what it looked like. She crawled up in my lap, and she sat there, and she was trembling. Her whole body was trembling, because you've got to remember, dogs hear things louder than we do, a lot louder. And it was so loud, the crack was so loud that it frightened me, and I'd never heard a crack that was like that. And she must have heard it even louder than I did. And so she was sake shaking, her whole body was trembling. And so I put my arms around her. She's really too big to be a lap dog, but for that moment, that's what she needed to be. And I held her for a while. And then I gently put her down, and I very tenuously, kind of creeped out, walked slowly out into the kitchen because I wondered if there was a fire or anything because that's where it seemed to hit. And I brushed my hand against the stove accidentally. I wasn't aiming to turn it on or to see if anything worked or not. And all of a sudden, I was thrown across the kitchen floor, and I landed next to the sink, which is the opposite, uh, the opposite area of the kitchen than what the stove was. I had been thrown across the room. There was enough electric charge that was in the stove. The stove was hit. And that it just threw me across the kitchen. And then I started smelling smoke. And so I called the fire department and they came up and there was no fire, but they did say that we could not use any of our electrical appliances until they were checked by an electrician. The real miracle of the day was that I was not hurt, Princess was not hurt, and there was no fire. So if you can imagine what that must have been like. I hear people say, oh, I love thunderstorms and I'm fascinated by them, but the thing is, they can be really dangerous, especially if you're anywhere close to lightning, they can be really dangerous. And I was in a dangerous spot, so was Princess, but we made it out fine. We are living in very perilous and dangerous times, but all through the times we are living in, God is always aware of what's happening to us, what our danger is, and he's there to protect us. If you look back, in your life. You can look back and see times when you've almost had an accident, but not quite, or things have happened and you know that you've been spared from something terrible, and an angel was probably on the scene because we do have angels to protect us from anything that's bad that's happening to us. So if we go back, we can thank God for the protection that we have received. And it causes us to reflect on the scriptures that remind us that God does protect us daily. Remember, David encouraged himself in the Lord, and if we're discouraged, we can do the same. Now, I'm going to read some scriptures basically from Psalm 91, because it has to do with how God protects us, as he did in my case during the thunderstorm, and there have been so many examples of it. I mean, I could do sermon upon sermon as to how I've been protected from this, that, and the other. So I'm going to start off with Psalm 91.4, and what it says is this. 
Psalm 91, 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. That's the whole verse, so I'll read it again. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. Can you imagine birds and the little birds that they cover with their wings and they protect them? You know, that's an image of God that's in the scripture, that he's like a bird covering with his feathers his little ones and protecting them. So the psalm goes on to say, and this is going to be the second one on the screen, Psalm 91, verse 5 and 6. I'm going to read part of it and then go back and read the rest of it. It says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. Now I'll read that again and then I'll continue to finish the verse. It's longer than that. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Now, I'm taking the idea that pestilence could be illnesses. Should we be afraid of illnesses? Should we be afraid of the coronavirus? I don't think we should be afraid of it, but I don't think we should be careless with it either. I mean, God gave us a brain so that we could be careful so we could think and we could make good choices and I think we need to make those good choices but we do not need to live as Christians in a state of fear because God's protection is around us and the third verse on the screen is going to be Psalm 91 verse 11 and this is what it says for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways and I'll read that again for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Now I'm going to be, these, these other verses I'm going to mention will not be on the screen, but I'm going to read verses 14 through 16 of Psalm 91. If you're ever afraid and you think that you're in a dangerous situation or could be, Psalm 91 is the psalm to turn to because it's all about God's protection of us and how he takes care of us. So verses 14 through 16 of Psalm 91 says this, because because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. This is like people talking to God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set God's name on high because he knows who I am. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with the long life and I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So what is it saying? If we kind of break this down, I, well, he's going to honor the people that he loves. He's going to answer them when they call. He's going to be with them. They can call upon him, and he will come to them, and he will answer them. He, he will be with them when they are in trouble, and he will bless them with long life, and he will satisfy them, and he will show them his salvation. You see, even though we think of the Gospels as talking about salvation, and they do, the Old Testament has references to salvation as well, because everything in the Old Testament that's talked about in terms of Jesus comes true in the New Testament. That's something that I'm going to get into as time goes on. Remember, God has known you from before your, li your life and before your birth, and he's protected you your whole life. It doesn't mean that you don't run into problems. It doesn't mean that you don't have problems that you need to solve, but he's with you every single step of the way. He has knowledge of all your problems, and he knows how he's going to solve your problems. He already has the answer. He is the answer, and he has the answer to everything that you will ever face. So he's walking with you. You are not going through this life alone. You don't have to. You don't need to. He will be with you. All you have to do is accept him. So I'm going to read some verses from Psalm 91 to you the, from a modern English version, and it might make things clearer to you than my using the King James, the older version. This is all Psalm 91. Verse 4, he will spread his wings over you and keep you secure. That brings back the image of the bird once again, and the birds and the little birds underneath the mother's wing. Verse 5, you won't need to worry about danger at night or 
arrows during the day. Verse 11, God will command his angels to protect you wherever you go. Verse 14, if you love me and truly know who I am, I will rescue you and I will keep you safe. Verse 15, when you are in trouble, call out to me. I will answer and you and be there to protect and honor you. So protection and honor, that's also a part of his, his uh, uh, care of us. At verse 16, you will live a happy and long life and you will see my saving power. So even here in the Old Testament, it's talking about salvation, his saving power. And, and this is not on the screen and it's also not on my notes, but if you read Isaiah 43, he said, I am the Lord and beside me there is no savior. And that's in reference to the salvation that Jesus gives us in the New Testament. The Old Testament and the New Testament, they fit together hand in glove. So to understand one, you really have to have some knowledge of the other because they do fit together. As a matter of fact, in some verses, the same words are used, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. That's how close that it is. And so you can learn a lot about the New Testament by going through part of the Old Testament. Now it makes me think of the prophet Elijah, who God protected as he served his king. Now this is not a, a, a sermon on Elijah, but just to review it, in Jewish history, there was a prophet named Elijah and he protected his king and he protected the nation of Israel. So enemies tried to capture him and put a stop to what he was doing because they never could get a handle of how, how to capture the Israelis because always Elijah, Elijah knew what was happening and, and what he should do about it and what the uh, nation should do about it. So Elijah told him, uh, there was, Elijah had a servant and the servant saw armies in the mountains and they were there to capture Elijah, and he was frightened by it. He said in the New Testament, he said in the King James, "Alas, my master, what shall we do?" Or basically, in the New Testament, uh, the modern English version, "What are we going to do now?" And Elijah told him not to be afraid, and he prayed to God and asked God to reveal to his servant his own army protecting them. And the servant, uh, God answered, and the servant saw all kinds of horses and chariots and, and uh, all kinds of God's army protecting him and protecting Elijah from the army that waited to capture them. So they knew they didn't have to be afraid. And the, the insight that I take from this, and I mention this in sermons here and there, is that God always knew what was happening and he always uh, would let Elijah know what he needed to do, how much danger he was in, what he needed to know and what to do next. He actually protected him and Elijah always knew that God's army was there to protect him. So therefore, he knew God knew the circumstances. He revealed what he needed to know to Elijah and Elijah realized there was an army of God protecting him all the while. So therefore the servant didn't have to be afraid. He actually was allowed to see the horses and the chariots and God's army protecting them against the army that would try to capture them. You know, in your own life, you need to know that God has knowledge of all your situations and he understands all of your situations. Every crisis that you're in, he already knows about it. And he's going to reveal to you what it is that you should do and what needs to happen. And sometimes you may feel that you're in the dark and you're handling your problems alone, but you never are handling your problems alone. Remember, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, which is God, the triune God resides in us and we are never alone. And you need to know every step of the way he's going to be guiding you. And if things don't work out the way you th think that they should, it will help you to remember that there's a purpose to everything that happens and God makes good out of everything and everything that happens fits into his plans. Now Romans 8.28, and here again, this is not going to be on the screen, says that everything works together for good to those who are the called according to his purpose. And we may know that's true, but when we're in trouble and we're nervous, we need to think about that. Yes, 
everything is going to work out to our good. If we're believers and we let God to work in our lives, everything's going to work out to good according to what his purpose is because God has everything in control. God has, has uh, uh, there's nothing that slips by God. He knows it all. We're not expected to understand it all. We can't understand it all. Our brains are limited, but God knows everything and he knows what's going on behind the scenes and he will walk us through everything. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, here again, this won't be on the screen, and it's from the New Testament. It says, be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't be afraid of anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Your heart being your emotions, your mind being your intellect and thinking. We have to guard both. God will guard both what our emotions are and what our intellectual thinking is. So guarding your heart and your mind is important. And so you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid of anything. And you can t turn to God and with thanks, you know, you know he's going to intervene at the right time. And the peace, which is greater than what you can imagine, will manage your heart and also your mind and your emotions. It means that God knows everything about you. He knows what's happening to you moment by moment. He will give you the love and the care that you need, and you have an unseen army protecting you on a daily basis. It is really true, and I can tell you lots of situations in my own life where I can see that it has been true, and I can practically see the angel's protection because of things that have happened. I mean, I'm still here and I'm in my 80s and I've seen a lot, but God's been with me all the way. So I'm going to close it here. We'll return and do something else next week. Please join me then.